Hey, hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome to another dungeon guide and walkthrough. Today we'll be doing Irkton. As you can see, I'm starting out here in Prevalia, right at the bank, right by the Prev Merchant, the entrance to it. Irkton is a new player dungeon. I don't, I don't mean the brand new player dungeon, but it is the place that if you're fresh off Shelter Island, you're going to want to go to. Irkton's designed at this point, well it was redesigned, at first it was a very difficult dungeon, you would need to get a token that cost roughly 10k to get in there, all that's done with, crazy mobs, they're gone, revamped it, it's pretty simple mobs, not a lot of crazy mechanics, okay gold, uh, really good gold for new players, and honestly, it's empty and easy, so okay, new players, I'm going to help you out here, uh, back when I first started playing, about six months ago, most people didn't really explain in their videos how to get to these dungeon locations, so I've tried to do that in every video. I'm going to continue to do it here. So you're going to want to start off in Prevalia, just like where I was at the North Bank there. And if you open up your map, which you can get to, by the way, using this little handy menu tool here, you're just going to click the World Map option up on the top. That'll pop this whole big map up. If you haven't used it before, mess around with it. All right, so Irkton's right over here all the way on the right. I don't know if you can see my mouse. But basically, we're going to start at the north gate exit, run all the way up down the path, and get on in there through the main entrance. Keep in mind, there is a second entrance, uh, the cave tunnel. It's closer to Prevalia overall, but we're going to go in the main entrance just so you can experience what the area looks like. And if you want to farm outside, you'll get a feel from that on the way in. All right, so let's head on over. So I know I haven't done too many videos recently. I'm going to get started on redoing all of my dungeon videos, guys. I don't know if you're aware, but with that revamp to the dungeon three weeks ago, everything's gotten quite a bit more difficult. The layout really hasn't changed. That still holds up. If you've already watched those videos and, and uh, learned how to get through the dungeon, it's all the same. Don't stress. However, the mobs themselves have a lot more health. They deal a lot more damage. And they have... <laughs> Some crazy new abilities. As an example, in Mausoleum, the Vampire Countesses have a way to turn you invisible, similar to the Bards in SSC. And here's the first cave entrance you can go in, right below me there. And then we will be running up into Urgton, going this direction. Uh, but they'll turn you invisible, the Countesses and Maws. And then for roughly 10 to 15 seconds, you are unable to perform any actions while a doppelganger of your character runs around and smacks everyone else around you. Allies, enemies, whatever, as long as it's not another monster, it's going to attack them. Now, the thing about it is you'll find that you'll get stuck invisible far longer. It does quite a bit of damage. I think that these are a lot of the abilities that everyone's going to want to have to take a look at again in a new guide video. So, all right, guys, we're on level one of Erkton. Just to clarify, again, most of these mobs are easy. We came in the very front entrance, or rather the center entrance, if you will, in the middle of Erkton. These are your lowest tier mobs. These orcs, they'll drop 50 to 80 gold apiece. Same thing with the orc mages, roughly 70 to 100. Same thing along with the orc captains. And here on level 1, if you look at the map in the top right, we have our first red moon gate. If you find that this is still too difficult for you as a new player, hit that moon gate, uh, get back over to shelter, finish training your skills. I have a suspicion that you probably don't have your stats maxed out or your skills maxed out quite yet. All right, so level one, I, there really isn't anything special. There's one thing to avoid. I'll go run over there right now. Uh, you may be tempted to check this out because there's a bunch of mobs in there, but it is kind of like a gauntlet system. Once you run in there and kill some mobs or hit a lever, it's going to lock you in there until you finish everything off. If you die, well, it sucks. You're going to have to run back and loot your corpse, but it's right through here. You can get here from two different ways. You'll know it because there's a bunch of goblins, a little lever in the middle there, and then a couple wolfhounds. New players, stay away from that. That's the only spot in this dungeon I recommend you don't run full force into. I believe it also spawns mobs when you trigger it. So just be careful. Don't go in there as a new player yet. If you have some form of aspect, uh, maybe level 2 or 3, that's not bad to go hit it. Most new players aren't going to bother with it. Feel free to clean it up. Maybe pull one or two mobs at a time. Don't go crazy though and stand in the middle of it. I tried it earlier. I took every single mob on me and they got me down to half in a blink of an eye. And I'm aspect tier 13, almost 14, with some defense links. So it took quite a bit of damage. All right, so that was the entrance to two. Let me go back out again in case you missed that. It's on the east side of level one here, east of the red gate. If you open your map and mouse over the little white stairs, it'll tell you where you're going. 
Level two, uh, fairly similar. A couple more locations you're probably not going to want to go. I don't recommend going in here as a new player and pulling the six or seven mobs that are down there. Uh, you could pull from the edge of the stairs there around and use the wall to LOS them. That would be my recommendation. The bombers, they don't do a ton of damage, but let's go ahead and see. Uh, let's take a hit. I have full defensive going, though. Like I've got defensive swing maxed. I've got my parry codex. Let's see. let him go off and see what he does. Let's see, that might be without bulwark. Five damage. Okay. Granted, my damage reduction is pretty high. I don't think it's a big deal if you take one of those hits if you're at full health, but try to avoid them. Pretty easy. They'll say they're igniting. Number countdown will occur and uh, move on out of it. Okay, let's go explore a little bit more too. This guy's fighting a bomber right now. Looks like he's a low-level earth user. Seems like he's doing just fine. I guarantee you could handle the archer too. And if he can't, I'm gonna run over there and save him. Let's see. He's not attacking the archer. Okay, he should be good. There's no way that archer kills him. He's far too tanky for that. More bombers. This is one of those rooms, pull one at a time. You know, clear some of these out of the way. Uh, go ahead and kill them as you got them lower. Orc mages are going to be tough to pull multiple at a time with no LOS. As you can see, even I'm taking a little bit of damage. But I don't have my damage reduction going right now. I'm not attacking anything, so I don't get those benefits. I have to trigger it by attacking things with my setup. All right. And we got a special little spot here on two. Um, Cave Bear's not too bad. Easy kills. This section right here. As a new player, avoid it as well. Now, if you've got peacemaking or summoning, it should be fine. As a summoner, a bard, most of this will be trivial. Trivial. Uh, if you're a brand new player, I suspect you're going to be a pure dexer if you haven't already looked into going uh, bard dexer or summoner. Um, this spot typically will lock you out. I'm surprised it hasn't done that to me since I just killed that last time I was here doing this. I attacked that stone guard Eden, and it put up two barriers on both uh, entrance and exit from here. And we're going to be heading over to level two from the exit. This would be considered the entrance here. It'll put a barrier up here. Summon four or five bombers. That will kill you, having that many. This is the exit going up the ramp right there. Both sections will get walled off if you do trigger it. All right, let's get down to, down to three. Uh, the meat of Urikton. You're going to find Eddins, Ogres, Ogre Mages, I believe a Blood Cyclops, some more Blood Orcs, and a couple Captives. Eddins themselves, I mean, they're no pushovers, but they're definitely stronger than anything else you've faced in this dungeon so far, other than that Eddins Stone Guard that was up, uh, just a level below. These guys are all going to drop relatively the same amount of gold, 200 to 300 gold to kill. As you can see, some magic items here. Ogre Mage, likely the same deal. Uh, the density here isn't as bad. However, if you're the only one down here, which likely you will be, as we can see there's no one here right now, and uh, we're approaching prime time. I don't think as a new player that you'll be able to kill all these mobs before they start respawning again. Sections like where I am right now, yes. You can kill those, they won't respawn until you've moved on to another spot. And as you can see, I'm getting aspect items down here as well. Every mob in the game has a chance to drop aspect items. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry. Um, there's plenty of guides out there that explain the aspect system, the codex system, the summoner's tome. Uh, plenty of details on all those different elements to the game. I also have a video on my channel that describes uh, what aspecting is, what Dexer codexes are, how it all relates to a Dexer build like mine and a few other little bits of information there. Aspecting isn't a late game thing either. It's something you're gonna to wanna to work on as soon as you can. Uh, that and your codexes, whatever they may be. So if you're a summoner, get your summoner's tome and wizard's grimoire as soon as possible after you have your full spell book. If you're a bard, get your barding codex as soon as possible. You gain experience with those just by having it on you and killing things. You don't have to do anything with it. You can literally not even trigger anything on it and still gain experience with it. As long, well, rather, I think you do have to have a stance triggered, uh, but you really don't have to do anything active is what I'm getting at. Put it on your person, turn on a stance, problem. All right, so I'm gonna clear these really quickly, a little faster than I was just now. And then we're going to head up and kill that Blood Cyclops. I just want to get a feel for that to see if I believe any of you new players can kill it. It might be too difficult for you guys. Everything else in here, 
as long as your skills are up, you know, you've got your 700 or 720 template, likely going to be 700. It's going to cost you roughly 400k to get to 720 in the form of skill orbs or skill balls, which are also random drops. 700 should be fine to come down here and clear all this. Alright, let's go up to that Blood Cyclops. They also have some chests down here, it looks like. I wonder if this one was already picked. I'm going to assume somebody picked it. I'm surprised to see a Greater Magic Resist Potion in there. Uh, and yes, Greater Magic Resist Potions have value. Use them in PVM. If you're going up against a tough caster, you're struggling, or you don't have Magic Resist, it's a good idea to pop one. Alright, 561 gold. I took a little bit of damage there. Um, I have tier 13 air again, so I reduced damage by about 24% from that. Running Bulwark, I'm reducing 35% there. That's close to 60% damage reduction just from my aspect and codex alone, and I still got down to about half health with 119 armor. Um, yeah, so leave the Blood Cyclops alone unless you're a summoner or some form of bard. Alright, while I'm running out, I'll explain that a little bit better. Also, it'll take us to the level 2 Red Moon Gate. First, let me preface with this. Play what you want. Just be prepared for a grind. If you're looking for instant results and you don't care what you play, I highly recommend going Summoner or Bard Dexer. Bard Dexer is incredibly cheap. It's incredibly easy. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there's not a lot of skill involved in it. You'll just run into barding breaks. It's not my thing, to be honest with you guys. I like a good bard, but I'm not a bard player myself. I have no no issues with people who play them. I just don't find it fun. Summoner is going to be a little bit slower, but very tanky. As long as you're not taking the hits, very tanky. All right. Apologies, guys. I'm trying to find my way out of here. There may not be. A, I think there's a red moon gate right over here. There should be. Let me see. Hopefully I'm not killing these guys by running around in circles like a fool. I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, what the heck's going on here? What's this guy doing? Uh, I'm lost, friends. I'm sorry. I don't know Errington all that well. So I think the way to get through over there is to go underneath. From what I recall, there was a red moon gate over there. Let's go double check, guys. Hey, what do you know? And it's not on the map. So, not lost, just forgot where to go. <laughs> I'm lost. Crimson Moongate. All right, guys, well, that's Erickton uh, for the most part. I'll be getting to Nacero and some other videos here soon. With those recent dungeon changes, <sighs> I'm going to have to take my time down there, and I'm going to go for mobs that have changed. I don't plan to necessarily kill everything again but I'm gonna go for the ones that I know cause people problems that didn't used to cause anybody problems anyways thanks for watching look forward to seeing you guys in the next video uh, if you have any questions drop them in the comments hit me up on discord I'm always happy to talk if you want me to analyze your Dexter build yes Dexter build I'm not great at the others yet I understand them but I'm much better at Dexter so hit me up feel free we'll talk soon have a good one